Today, we are going to look at how to create a bullet chart in Excel. Now, bullets don't come natively out of the box in Excel, so do need a little bit of creativity to make one. And today, we're going to look at three different variations. So let's jump into Excel now. Starting off with the overlapping version, then we'll show the target as a line. And finally, we'll look at building some performance banding into our bullets. For each of these, we are going to have a simple performance based data set for a sales advisor. We have four metrics and an actual and target for each of them. Now, this is where bullet graphs are best used for making those comparisons. They leverage our familiarity with bar graphs and deliver quite a lot of information in a compact space. So using this data, let's make our first chart. With our data selected, click insert and then select the vertical pairwise bars. Now, all we need to do is give the appearance that the actual bar is both smaller and in front of the target bar. To do that, we can undertake the following steps. Select the data series, click format data series and change the gap width to 40. Then select the actual data series. We want to plot this series on the secondary axis. Doing this places the bars in front of those target bars and allows us to control this set of bars independently. Now we have that control, we can change the gap width of these bars to 150%, which ensures they are smaller. And now we can see those target bars behind. Now it's just a case of formatting. We can start by removing the chart border, the grid lines, the legend, those secondary axis labels and the chart title. Now we can turn our attention to items we want to revise. In this case, our axes, adding a title and tick marks together with a little formatting and the colors of our bars, using a gray for our actuals and a light blue for our target behind. Finally, let's add a chart title and a legend next to the bars and an observational takeaway. Now, if those bars feel a little weighty, then we can replace that target bar with a line instead. Using the same data set, let's do this now. Complete the same steps as before to get our pairwise bars, make the gap width somewhere in that 40% space, and then this time we want to assign our target bars to the secondary axis. This time, instead of formatting the bars, we are going to change them to a different chart type completely. I prefer this way, which provides slightly more formatting options, and that is to use error bars. For this, change the goal bars to a scatter plot by right clicking the bars and selecting change chart type and then the X, Y scatter. Now we will see orange circles where the ends of the bars were. Select those dots and now in chart design, click add chart elements and select standard error, error bars. Now what we need to do is format them. First up, delete the vertical error bars by clicking and hitting delete. Now selecting the horizontal ones, right click and click format error bars. For the end style, we want to select no cap and then choose fixed amount for the error amount. Notice how the chart has resized back to how it looked earlier. For the error amount, a size of 0.25 works well here. Then in the formatting options, adjust the size and style of the line to your personal preferences. The final step is to remove the scatter plot data that we have. This is easily done. Click the dot and in the paint bucket options, click marker. Expand the marker options and select none. And there we have it. With similar formatting to the previous graph, we have our second version of our bullet chart. Our final bullet variation retains the bar and line style of this version, but adds some additional detail, performance bandings. So in addition to the performance data for our individual, you'll now see values representing low, medium and high performance. These relate to the average performance for this particular individual's peer group. Now selecting all of the data, the chart we are going to add this time is a 100% stack bar. The first thing we need to do is swap the order of the rows and columns around to stack the performance bandings and not the categories. And as you can see, we have all of our five elements stacked. Now in actual fact, we only want to stack those peer group performance bandings. So we need to remove both the actual and the target elements from being part of the stacks. Let's start off by making our gap width 40% initially. Selecting the actual stacks, clicking format data series and adding them to the secondary axis, just like we did with the first bullet chart, will make these bars independent. 
Because of that, they are defaulting to 100%, which makes sense because they are the only component on this secondary axis, which of course is a 100% stack chart. So now we can change the chart type to a normal column for this data series only by right clicking, change chart type and selecting the 2D column. Now if we go back to our bar gap width and make that around about 150%, we see our actual bars now in front of our performance bandings. For our target line, we are going to do the same as before, changing the target to a scatter plot by right clicking those bars, selecting change chart type and that XY scatter. Then we can add our error bars, we'll format them in exactly the same way and then remove that orange data marker. Finally, all we are left with is our formatting, shading the peer group banding sequentially, having a darker color for our actual and our target line also being clearly emphasized. Completing the other formatting steps we've looked at previously gives us a final view looking like this. Three different types of bullet charts there. And if you enjoy seeing how storytelling with data create charts, check out this video next.